Every April, we recognize students who show in their words and their actions the virtue of hope. But what is hope? Hope is the joyful trust in the future. Our hope is rooted in the knowledge that God loves us and is always faithful to us, protecting us and helping us. We are all children of God and students of our schools of hope. The virtue of hope gives us confidence in God's call to us, his call to unite with him in the kingdom of heaven. I recognize that we are a Lenten people and we seek to return to God. I practice humility, kindness, and encourage hope in others. I trust in the word of God and in the words and deeds of the people who care about me. I give others hope by giving them reason to trust in my words and deeds as well. The Easter season and the ascension of our Lord reminds us we must place our hope in Jesus who has gone to prepare a place for us in heaven. True hope does not disappoint. Hello and welcome to Catholicity with Mr. Norino for Wednesday, April 21st, 2021. Today, as you may have guessed from our introduction, we're going to be talking a lot about hope. Today we're going to continue and finish up our discussion about Jesus as the bread of life from another scripture reading from the book of John, from the Holy Gospel according to John. And we are going to start transitioning little by little into the theme for this year's Catholic Education Week which is nurturing hope. So last year, you might recall, at home, we were doing Catholic Education Week in May, and it was all about igniting hope, lighting that fire of our hope in Christ. This year, because there's still a lot of uncertainty, we are nurturing the hope. We are taking care of the hope that we ignited one year ago. So we'll begin with the prayer for Catholic Education Week. We will have a very short snippet from the book of the prophet Isaiah, and then we'll read together the follow-up, the second part of yesterday's scripture where Jesus describes what the bread of life is. So we'll begin with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious and generous God, creator of the earth, our common home, with each new day we prepare the earth of our lives by sowing seeds of gratitude for all you have given. Inspire us to cultivate relationships with all living beings. May we harvest new fruit and marvel in the wonder at the beauty around us. Nurture us in hope. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had fed the crowd with the five loaves, he said to the people, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Lord Jesus Christ. So yesterday we talked a lot about what it means to participate in the Eucharist, what it means to have our first Holy Communion, what it means to have our 5,000th Holy Communion, what it means to have a renewed appreciation for receiving the Eucharist after a long absence. We can talk about 
long periods of time between going to church and receiving communion, just in our day-to-day lives, when there's not a pandemic going on, because we know it's there for us if we wanted it. And we know that when the pandemic is on and the churches close, it's basically impossible to physically receive Christ in the Eucharist. We talked a little bit yesterday about the prayer for spiritual communion. And that was shared with us by the um, EWTN channel. EWTN there. If you have an opportunity to watch masses on EWTN via their, their YouTube channel or their television channel, I encourage you to do so. And also, masses, daily masses, are available through the Archdiocese of Toronto. And you can check out that right down here at the bottom. That's a link to their YouTube channel. It'll be in the description as well. Every day, there's Mass. And every day, in all parishes around the world, there is Mass. And it's the same Mass. We all follow the same readings. We all follow the same process. Depending on where you are in a specific time zone, you might be interested to hear what they're saying and what you're saying are almost echoing each other. So that continuity is important for us to all be able to pick up from where we left off, no matter where we are, and in this global village, we can actually participate in Mass, whether we're sitting in that church or not. As we partake in the Eucharist, whether we're there or we're not there, whether we are receiving the host, the Blessed Sacrament, in our hand, to our tongue, into our stomach, or we are participating with the spiritual communion, having faith in our ability to receive Jesus spiritually as a sacrament, and telling Jesus how important he is to us, what we believe, how we know that he's with us, how we don't want to be separated from him, that that praying, that, that intense connection that we have can equal the Eucharist. Jesus feeds us with his body and blood, and we enter into communion with him, and we enter into communion with one another. We are all part of this spiritual communion. We are all part of that physical Eucharist. We are all together in Christ. We are the body of Christ. Christ is the bread of life. He gives us the food that we need to survive, literally and spiritually. But unlike other food, which becomes part of us, Jesus is in the sacred bread and wine, and it makes us more like him. So it's almost like you have a part of him with you. And you want to get the part of him to your innermost self. And as humans, we know that when we take something into our mouth and we bring it into our digestive system, it gets into our bloodstream, it gets into every cell in our being, it gets into our our makeup of who we are, and it becomes a part of us. So when Christ is a part of us, we become more Christ-like. So we too are to be bread for the world. Jesus is the bread of life. Our job is to be Christ-like and be the bread of the world. The living bread sustains us and prepares us for the day when we will come to the heavenly banquet. It's a pledge of future glory. It means that when Christ fulfills his promise, what he says is, I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So people were alive, but nowhere near as alive as they were when they were Christ-like and were able to bring in a part of Christ to their bodies, to their souls. And when we say, give us this day our daily bread, we are talking about the bread of life. We're talking about what we need to survive. Man cannot live by bread alone. Man must live by the word of God as well. Words from Jesus. So, yesterday, you might have had an opportunity to write down or draw some things that uh, are meant to be gratitude for Christ, for him being the bread of life. Today is all about communion. And today is all about how communion gives you hope. 
Hope is something that we must have to get through what we're going through right now. And with the absence of our ability to have physical communion communion at church, to bring us in communion with each other, how can we utilize that longing for communion, what it means to each of us, and the fact that we know we're going to receive it again and going to physically receive Christ as a part of us, how does that bring us hope? However you want to interpret that, whether you're going to write a list or do a presentation, or I think that's what today has to be about. We have to start talking about hope. Hope is important. Hope is our theme for Catholic Education Week. Hope is what happens in April. Hope, hope. I hope that you're having a great day and a a good start to your virtual learning again, and we'll see you tomorrow.